أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه واجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه وأدخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين Today, inshallah, we'll touch upon some of the themes from Surat ar rum the Romans. That's uh, chapter 30, 30. Now, the, the main theme of Surat ar rum is Allah Taala sends many signs of his power and majesty to man. If we want to know Allah, there's three different venues that Allah allows us to know him. One through the universe, if we contemplate the universe, you will you will find Allah if you if you contemplate the universe. The second one is if you observe the events that happen around you, you'll see that Allah's promises and Allah's threats they come they materialize. That's how you, you come to know Allah. And the third one is his Quran. So we have these three venues. Surah al rum is talking about the signs of Allah in the universe. There are many verses in the surah that says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ And among his signs, and among his signs, and he gives us many examples of his signs in this, uh, in this uh, universe. So uh, Allah wants to guide us to him through his signs to achieve tawheed and achieve the recognition that he is the only acting power in the universe. So inshallah, we'll see how the, how the verses, uh, you know, work together to get, to get us to that solution. Now, the, the word ayat repeats a lot. I mean, sometimes we think ayah is something in the Quran, but ayah in Arabic is a sign, anything that's, that points to something. So the signs of Allah, like the sun is a sign, the moon is a sign, the universe is a sign, your own body is a sign. Your, your, your child is a sign. Signs of Allah are all around us. And in everything, there's a sign that points to Allah. It says, I have a great creator. I have a God. I have somebody who nurtures me, who, who, who created me, who takes care of me. Everything has, has that sign. And the surah is inviting every believer to contemplate and think about these signs. You can't just look at them. And, and pass and pass by. You, you look, you know, you get a little bit of water, you drink it, and you just pass by. We're supposed to think about that water. You see the name of Razzaq in that water, the provider. You see that, you know, that is your rizq from Allah. I mean, you were, we're supposed to work our mind because that's the quality that humans have that no other creation has is the mind, the ability to think and the ability to to. To, to get to know Allah through our mind. And the, the, verse 8, uh, the beginning of verse 8, أَوَلَمْ يَتَفَكَّرُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ مَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَأَجْلِ مُسَمَّى Do they not contemplate within themselves? It's, it's asking us, don't you contemplate? You have a mind, don't take things just because somebody says it. Think about it. When you think about it, it cements itself. In, you, you build that conviction when you think. In verse 9, أَوَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَيَنْظُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ The beginning of it. Have they not traveled throughout the earth and observed how, what was the end of those before them? The signs are all there. You, know, you didn't see it in yourself. Didn't you go around the world and see how the ruins of some of those nations that Allah has destroyed, their ruins are still there. And Allah left it there as an example that when you disobey Allah, this is what happens to you. So the invitation is to, is to look at his signs, look at the events around us, and think and contemplate. Now, the surah starts mentioning many of the signs. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ إِذَا أَنْتُمْ بَشَرٌ تَنْتَشِرُونَ That's verse 20. And of his signs is that he created you from dust, then suddenly you were human beings dispersing throughout the earth. What a powerful sign from Allah. Can you get a... Can you grab a little bit of dirt and make a human out of it? I mean, it's something miraculous that Allah says, you were just a clump of dirt 
and now you're you're a walking talking human being that can think that can act you know so this is a sign from Allah that his power you know his 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 wisdom uh, if we ponder the creation of our body i mean it, it, you don't need to go you don't need a miracle <laughs> the body is a miracle by itself when when you see how the body works and how millions of functions in your body work perfectly to, you know every day you wake up every day you you know stand on your feet and you you walk around you don't think much of it you think how many of of your your body functions had to be working perfectly for you to get out of bed and that's from from the the perfect design of Allah um Verse 21 وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Your spouse is an ayah from Allah, is a sign from Allah. No, I mean, you cannot get another human being that you have no relation to and now Allah creates this strong bond between these two people that they were strangers now there is mawadda and rahmah. There is love in good times and there is mercy in the hard times. Only Allah can create that strong bond between a husband and, and, and a wife. And, you know, so next time you, you look at your wife, look at her as a sign from Allah, not somebody who's nagging the heck out of you. So it, it's, it's from, from the ayat of Allah that he created them from ourselves. You know, خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ From among yourself. It wasn't a, some different creature. It's a human being that was, Adam, uh, Hawa was created from one of Adam's ribs. It's from, you know, from, you know, the women are, are, are the other half of, of men. We're all the same, you know, the same creation. So it's a sign from Allah. And then the, the verse, the ending of the verse, Inna fi ذَلِكَ لَا آيَاتٍ لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Indeed, there are signs for people who give thought. You have to think about it to, to recognize that, you know, that ayah, to recognize that sign. You have to work your mind. Uh, verse 22, And among his signs is the creation of heavens and earth. That's in Quran, heavens and earth is the universe. Creating the universe is is a sign from Allah. And it's easy to, to, you know, when you look at it and billions of light years and the, the, the universe is so vast and expanding, you cannot but stand in awe and say, subhanAllah, you know, the, the Al-Khaliq, Al-Qadir, you know, all of these beautiful names of Allah, it, you get that when you, when you ponder the universe. And uh, the difference in, in your tongues and your colors, tongues could be, uh, perceived as, as like different languages, but every human being is unique. You have a vocal print. Your voice is unique. That's why you, you, you know somebody calls you and you know exactly who it is because every one of us have a unique voice, unique voice print, unique color. No two people have the exact same color and the eye can see 800,000 shades of the same color. So that's from, from, from the mercy of Allah that made us unique in, in, in some aspects. You have your own iris, you have your own fingerprint, you have your own DNA, you have your own... Nobody, no two, two people share so many things that Allah you know, created all of us individual, you know, as individuals. Uh, so skin color also is a defense mechanism. If you live in a hot country and, and you have white skin, you're going to get fried. So Allah, from His wisdom, He equips... You know, every, everybody who wants to live in a certain area with what allows them. You know, you go to Africa, they have the dark skin, they have the big nose so they can get the oxygen. I mean, subhanAllah, it's, it's from the, mer you know, the mercy of Allah and His perfect design. So that's, those are among His signs. And the ending of that verse, إِنَّ فِي ذَلَكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِلْعَالِمِينَ These are signs for people who have knowledge, who seek knowledge who want to learn, who want to find. You're not going to recognize those signs without studying, without going looking for them, pondering them, reading about them. Knowledge is not going to come to you. You have to go to it. In the verse 23, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ مَنَامُكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارُ وَابْتِغَاءُكُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يَسْمَعُونَ And of his signs is your sleep by night and day 
and your seeking of his bounty. Indeed, in that are signs for people who listen. So this is another one. You have to listen. So when you listen, you ponder and you seek knowledge, that's how you're going to find those signs of Allah. So, you know, we sleep by day, we rest, everything is quiet. We're working by day, it's, you know, there's noise and all that. And, and that's from, from you know, he, Allah made everything compatible. He, you know, during the day, the, the length of the day is, is good, the length of the night is, is, is good. Imagine if the day was, you know, 20 days. That's the, that's the cycle of, you know, on some planets, the day, you know, the daylight you know, spans multiple days. Imagine if, you know, you had to stay up for that long or you have to go to sleep while the sun is up. It's not a, you know, everything is compatible for the, for the benefit of, of man. So, and it's a reminder, when, when you go and seek out employment, you seek out work, you seek out an, an income, Allah is reminding you that it's from his fadl, from his bounty. It's not from your smarts. It's not from your, your, your power. It's not from your knowledge. Allah gave you all that stuff and allowed you to earn it. So you have to look at it. And everything you earn is, is a fadl from Allah, is, is a bounty from Allah. It's not from, from yourself or your smarts or your, or your power. So all we can, all we can do is strive. And Allah provides. We have to put the effort. We have to put the effort, but the results come from, from Allah. He's the one who provides. And another thing at night, manamukum bilayli wa nahar, about thing, sleeping. Sleeping is like a mini death. When you sleep, you're dead. And then Allah takes that soul and returns it to you by, by the morning. So we are on loan. Every night you go in, your soul gets taken. You don't know whether it's going to be returned or not. So think about that and never go to bed on a masya, on, on a sin. Because you, there are no guarantees that you're going to wake up. So Allah reminds us that he takes those souls and he returns them. So when we sleep, you know, we rest. You see a nice dream and you wake up in the morning all nice and happy. The body has nothing to do with it. You know, the body is the same thing. That dream that makes you happy in the morning is a sign from Allah that is a spiritual life. There is more to life than just your body, than eating, drinking. There is a spiritual aspect of it that is totally independent from the body. The body may be tired. You see a, a nice dream, you wake up in the morning happy, even though your body is tired. The body and the soul are, are two different things that Allah make you know work together. So... It, ass it assures us that there's a psychological, there's a spiritual aspect of our life that sometimes we don't pay attention to. <laughs> so we have to seek this knowledge, we have to listen, and we have to contemplate to recognize these verses. Now, why was the surah named a room, uh, the Romans? Now, the beginning of, of the surah, from verse 2 to the beginning of verse 4, <coughs> The Byzantines have been defeated in the nearest land, but they, after their defeat, will overcome within three to nine years. Now, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, the Persians, they beat the Romans so bad. I mean, it was a decisive victory that nobody thought that the Romans in that, the, uh, the Romans on the eastern side of the... Uh, on the Mediterranean were, were called Byzantines. So they had two different, uh, the Romans were split into two different uh, you know, dynasties, but that's beside the point. So they were defeated so bad that nobody thought that they will ever return to power. So when Allah says in a few years, and a few is three to nine, Allah says within a few years, they will beat the Persians. So the, the, that was a, a, a material sign for Quraysh. And that's a sign that the Quran is the word of Allah. Who, who other than Allah, who are the creator, the disposer of all affairs, the knower of the past, present, and future, can make a statement like that? And, you know, the, the statement was made, and within seven years, after, you know, on year seven, the Romans attacked the Persians and beat them. That was the sign for the people in that age. Um, the sign for the rest of us, 
is it says fi adna al ard in the in the lowest of the lands it happened in the dead sea which now modern science shows us it's the lowest point on land below sea level so the 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 miracle for the rest of us is the location of the battle was also foretold that it is the lowest part of of the of earth of dry earth not the sea so it's below it's the lowest point below sea level and that's the the dead sea in uh, in Syria Jordan and Palestine those areas so these these signs came came true and Allah uh, says uh, الْأَمْرُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَمِنْ بَعْدُ وَيَوْمَئِذٍ يَفْرَحُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ so so the the name of the surah because the surah is talking about Allah's signs the foretelling of the you know of the Romans defeating the Persians and the location of the battle were a sign from from Allah and that the ver- that the action actually happened were a sign from Allah and that matches the the theme of the surah Allah showing us his signs that's why it was called the Romans and then the pivotal verse in it after Allah shows us all his signs Allah says lillahi al-amru min qablu wa min ba'd wa yawma idhin yafrahu al-mu'minun to Allah belongs the command before and after and that day the believers will rejoice the day that the Romans will defeat the Persians, the believers will rejoice. And they'll rejoice because they know that the Qur'an is Allah's word. That when Allah said in the Qur'an that it will happen, and it happens, they are going to be very happy because it confirms the the authenticity of the Qur'an, that it's Allah's words, and not like Quraysh was saying that Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam was, was writing it or, or, or concocting it. So, لِلَّهِ الْأَمْرُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَمِنْ بَعْدِ is a, is a very pivotal surah that before the Romans were defeated, Allah was in control of everything. And after, before and after their, before their defeat and after their, their victory, to Allah belongs all events. Everything that happens in the universe, it belongs to Allah. And since it belongs to Allah, He can make a prediction like that. And the words in the Qur'an are his. And that's one of the proofs that the Qur'an is his word and not anybody else's. So recognizing these manifest signs should lead man to realize that all matters belong to Allah. And when we come to this realization, he sh- Allah shows us his signs. He shows us his power. And he shows us that this Qur'an is from him. So now... How can we put our hopes in somebody else or something else? When we are in need, do we run to Allah or do we run to our money or our job or our leaders or somebody strong that kind of that we think is going to protect us? So that's what Allah wants to get us to. You believe my signs, you believe my words. Don't go to anyone else. Come to me. To him belongs everything. لِلَّهِ الْأَمْرُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَمِنْ بَعْدِ To all things start from Allah and come back to Allah and always, always are in Allah's hands. So, you know, how can we obey somebody else other than Allah? And how can we fear anyone else other than Allah? If we truly believe His signs. And that's what Tawheed is. Tawheed is, is knowing and affirming the oneness of Allah that everything is in His hands. When that becomes cemented in your heart, trust me, you will not worry about anything or anyone. When a believer gets to that point, he knows money comes, money goes, jobs come, jobs goes. It's all in Allah's hands. If Allah wants me to have it, I'll have it. If Allah wants to take it, he take it. And you just you just go through life with, with such a good mentality that because you know that everything is in Allah's hands and he only gives you what's good for you so these are these are the signs that Allah wants us to you know to believe and another pivotal verse in verse 30 and I'll finish with that Allah says faqim wajhaka lid-dini hanifan fitrat Allah allati khatara an-nas 'alayha la la tabdila li khalqi Allah dhalika ad-din al-qayyim walakin akthar an-nas la ya'lamun 
That is another khutbah. That's a complete khutbah for this, for this verse. That all of these signs bring us to the verse before it, that uh, and this verse. If you believe that everything is from Allah, then the job is you direct your face toward the religion. You focus all of your existence for the obedience and the implementation of this faith. Aqim wajhak means the wajh is, is the representation of your yourself. So you, you point yourself in the direction of the faith and you do not look left or right. Hanifan means inclining. Inclining to it with love. Inclining to Allah with, with love that I will incline away from other things to him, away from everything else. So direct your face towards a religion, inclining to truth. Adhere to the fitrah of Allah because Allah, when he created us, he made our nature, our fitrah, exactly the same as what the commands that he ordered us to do in his, in his book. It's 100% match. He did not order us to do anything that our fitrah rejects or thinks it's not right. Fitrah and, and, and faith match 100%. Allah says, the fitrah of Allah upon which he has created all people, no change should there be in the creation of Allah. This fitrah will never change. From Adam till the last human being, it's the same fitrah, it's the same need to get close to Allah, to obey him, because that's the only time you're going to be happy in this life. There is no happiness if you're away from Allah. When you're, when you're, أَقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلْدِّينِ حَنِيفًا that's when you're going to be happy. When you, when you go with all of your focus and all of your effort and all of your power, you put it and employ it in the obedience of Allah and to stay on his deen, that's when, you, when your fitrah will be happy and your, your nafs will be happy and you'll be happy in this life and in, in the hereafter. So this is the type of worship that Allah wants us to have. Not the shallow Yes, I believe, yeah, there's an Allah, and yeah, it's his book. Okay, it's his book. What are you going to do with it? Do you read it? Do you comprehend it? Do you work? You know, do you implement its orders? Do you refrain from its, what it forbids? That's, that's where, you know, that's the type of worship that Allah wants us to do. Complete focus and complete, uh, putting every power that we have in implementing it. So our nature will be satisfied and happy because otherwise it will never be happy. It, it is only happy with the nearest to Allah. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashadu an la ilaha inta astaghfirullah wa alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.